whatever that glass ceiling was, we just ninja kicked it out of it. You know, we have to, sh we shattered it. Asian representation in Hollywood has not always been high. In truth, a number of outliers have broken into the American movie industry, Jackie Chan being a notorious example. However, they still remain a minority, especially amongst those playing lead roles in these movies. While there have been gradual changes, women's representation has been worse. Recently, though, the movie Everything, Everywhere, All at Once came out and gave the female Asian immigrant the much-needed voice on the big screen they've been looking for. What's happening? Actress Michelle Yeoh played the lead role in the movie remarkably well, even bagging a Golden Globe for Best Actress for her part, but she almost didn't let the show happen. Many might not believe it, but Yo almost turned down her role in the movie because of the main character's name. But there's something more to this which we'll look at in this video. But before that, who is Michelle Yo? Growing up, Michelle Yo was born in Ipoh Pirak, Malaysia on the 6th of August 1962. She has a rich ancestry that includes Chinese, Cantonese, and Hokkien lines. She was born to the family of Janet Yeo and Yeo Kian Tik. Her mother was a lawyer and her father a politician and was a member of the Malaysian Chinese Association, MCA. He died on the 5th of November, 2014. Yeo grew up in a well-to-do home, being able to learn the English language and getting the best education that her parents could afford. In honor of their heritage, her parents gave her the Chinese name Yeo Chu King. Ipoh Swimming Club was next door to Michelle and her family's home as she grew up in the tropical tin mining town, so she and her friends could spend countless weekends there swimming and diving. Michelle, ever the tomboy, enjoyed a wide variety of sports. She was a national swimmer, diver, and squash player from Malaysia when she was a teenager. She once held a Malaysian junior squash champion title and represented the state of Pirak in the national stage. Michelle also had a deep interest in the piano and Chinese art. Her real love was dance, especially ballet, though not exclusively. Her mom says that Michelle was already dancing before she could walk. At the age of four, she began to learn ballet actively. She attended a convent secondary school, the main convent Ipoh, in Malaysia until she was 15. At 15, the Yo family moved to the United Kingdom, where she was enrolled in an all-girls boarding school. She majored in ballet at the UK's Royal Academy of Dance. She wanted a career in ballet, but this was not to be, as a spinal injury cut short her chances at this career part. She changed course and focused on choreography and other arts. In 1982, she graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in Creative Arts and a minor in Drama. She stayed back for further studies and left for Malaysia the following year. Michelle's Beauty Queen Era as a tomboy, many people did not expect her to contest in any feminine competition, and she did not. Still, upon her return to Malaysia, she found out her mother had entered her in the National Beauty Contest. Michelle was a beautiful young lady, and her mother had used her pictures to enter her for the beauty contest. By the time Michelle arrived in Malaysia, she'd already made it past the qualifying rounds. She decided to stay in the competition to please her mother, and contrary to her tomboyish nature. She was eventually crowned Miss Malaysia at the age of 21. She had intended returning back to the UK to pursue her postgraduate studies, but her responsibilities as Miss Malaysia kept her in the country. Her position was similar to that of a goodwill ambassador, and she held the position for a year. While serving as Miss Malaysia, she traveled to Australia for another beauty contest. There, she won the Miss International Tourism Quest pageant. It was after this that the course of her life began to change. Meeting Jackie Chan and breaking into TV. Near the end of her time as Miss Malaysia, she met Dixon Poon, a Hong Kong businessman searching for someone to be in a commercial with Jackie Chan for a watch brand that one of his companies sold. Michelle went to Hong Kong because she was asked to do a commercial there. She was also in another commercial with Chow Yun-fat, who she would later act with in a number of movies. The businessman Dixon Poon had already started a movie production company in Hong Kong named D&B Films, and Michelle had caught their attention. Before she began to act, though, she mastered writing the Cantonese language, although she previously had a passive understanding of the language. Yo got her start in movies by playing action and martial arts roles. 
Although her very first movie role was in the 1984 action comedy film The Owl vs. Dumbo, she played the average woman without any significant impact in the film. From the movie, she could also watch how fight scenes were choreographed and was inspired to do it. So, when DNB was about to grant her next role, she opted for the role that required martial art fights. Michelle did a lot of physical training to prepare for an action movie role. She spent 10 to 12 hours a day in a gym practicing kicks, punches, and other martial arts moves. In 1985, Yo had her first major movie, Yes Madam, which co-starred Cynthia Rothrock. Yo played the role of a fearless senior inspector. Her role in this movie had her doing a lot of stunts and physical tasking moves, and she did a lot of these without a stunt double. The movie was a success, and it gave birth to the girls with guns genre, with Michelle Kahn at its forefront. She used the name Michelle Kahn when she began to act and for her earlier movies because DMV Films felt that Kahn would appeal more to the international community and was a much more marketable name for her. She would eventually revert to Yo upon her entrance into Hollywood. She went on to act in a number of movies for DMV Films, including Royal Warrior, which had a lot of brutal fight scenes, and Magnificent Warriors, another intense action movie with a lot of action sequences. But in this movie, Yo ruptured an artery in her leg. By this time, Yo was in a relationship with Poon, the owner of DMB Films, and he made her stay away from action movies after the injury. Her next and last movie under DMB Films was the film Easy Money, a non-action movie released in 1987. In this film, Yo was a rich woman who organized crimes for fun and was being chased by a detective. It was a fresh take from the actress who had previously starred more in action roles, a Brief Marriage and Yo's First Movie Break In 1988, Michelle Yo married Dixon Poon. By this time, they had been together for a while, and their marriage seemed like a dream for many. A wealthy businessman marrying a famous actress was the stuff of celebrities. During the period of her marriage, Yo stopped acting at the insistence of her husband. During that period, Yo became more prominent in the Hong Kong fashion scene and featured in a number of magazines as Poon's wife. After three years of marriage, the couple went their separate ways. They never gave a clear reason for their divorce, but they have kept a friendly relationship till date. Back with a banger. Yo returned to the movie scene with the movie Police Story 3, Super Cop, and was warmly received by the industry. The film was meant to be a Jackie Chan movie, but it is remembered more as a Yo Welcome Back movie. She stole the show, and in every scene she was in, she performed excellently. The success of the movie and her performance in it was a foreshadowing of things to come, as she got into other wonderful movies which eventually led her to Hollywood in 1997. Solid international fame and acclaim If there was any movie that stuck Yo in the heart of the Western world, it was her role in the 1997 James Bond movie, Tomorrow Never Dies. She acted well in the film and was considered the first female Bond equal in the history of the James Bond franchise. Although she wanted to perform her stunts in the movie, director Roger Spottiswood felt it was too dangerous for her, although she took it upon herself to perform all her fight scenes herself. After the success of the movie, she got to act in some other significant movies leading up to the 2000s, chief amongst which was the martial arts film Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, a movie for which she got nominated for a BAFTA award. The movie was in Mandarin Chinese, but Yo had not begun to speak the language at that time, so she had to just learn the lines for the movie. The movie was a global success. By 2002, Yo had founded her own production company and filmed her first English film, The Touch, a movie about a family of martial artists and acrobats. Over the years, she acted in a number of popular movies, including The Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor, where she acted alongside actors Jet Li and Brendan Fraser. Yo did not get into television until 2015 when she played Mae Foster, a North Korean spy who was the wife of a British ambassador to Thailand. Her career continued going strong as she played the role of a family matriarch in the widely recognized movie Crazy Rich Asians in 2018. One of her most recent successes was in the Marvel movie Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, where she played the role of Ying Na, the aunt of Shang-Chi and a guardian of Tao Lo almost rejecting her role in Everywhere All at Once. Michelle Yeoh has been one of the most popular female Asian faces on the international movie scene, and it came as a shock to many when, in an interview, she revealed that she almost did not accept the role of Evelyn Kwan Yang in Everywhere All at Once. 
The Movie Everywhere All at Once is a science fiction fantasy movie that follows the story of an Asian immigrant mother who's running a laundromat. She ends up traveling through a multiverse of worlds and meets with other versions of herself while gaining their powers. The movie takes a look at the relationship between Asian immigrants and their daughter. It sheds a never-before-spoken perspective and is a movie that speaks for the minority while appealing to a majority. Initially, the movie script was written for Jackie Chan, but the role was eventually offered to Michelle Yeoh. Some people might think that this was why she almost refused the role, but that isn't true. The primary reason she almost turned down the movie role was because of a name. When Yo was given the character to act, the name of the character was initially Michelle Wang, a sort of nod to Michelle Yeoh herself, but it did not get the reception they hoped. Yo quickly got back to the directors and asked for the name to be changed, as she was not an Asian immigrant mother who ran a laundromat. She would prefer that the character had a life of its own and not be named after her. Yo said she would not play the role if the character's name was not changed. This would have been a huge loss for the movie as she embodies the character perfectly, letting years of experience shine through Evelyn Kwan Yang. This came with a lot of rewards as the film was a massive global success, grossing over $100 million on a budget of just $25 million. It became the first movie from A24 Studios to cross the $100 million mark. The movie also briefly became the highest rated movie of all time, surpassing The Godfather. The movie was nominated for a number of awards, including 10 British Academy Film Awards and 14 Critics' Choice Movie Awards, and it won five of those. And six Golden Globe Awards nominations winning two of these, with Yo winning her first Golden Globe Award for Best Actress. Both Yo and A24 benefited a lot from her decision to stay in the movie after her demands were met. While many people might have found her reason for almost turning down the role flimsy, others believe she had a strong reason for her insistence. What do you think? Let us know in the comments section. For more inspiring stories like this, don't forget to like and subscribe.